where you want to start? Where you want to start? You want to start from I, I the beginning? Saw, I saw the comment. Me and my wife, who were just here, I, I saw the comment. I was like, no way. I said, no, I need to. Like, I have had a lot of things, you know, I've seen a lot. But this right here need to go out there. I'm posting this <laughs> on my ministry. Because, you know, we have a YouTube ministry and Facebook mm -hmm. ministry. So mm -hmm. I'm post this is going in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just uh, if okay. you know the whole thing that you want to share, the floor I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell it all from the beginning to up until yesterday. From the beginning to yesterday, I'm gonna tell it all. Till yesterday. Till yesterday. Mm -hmm. Let's hear okay. It. Okay. So I met Stephen Uchina Ezariki in November of last year. We met on a TikTok, very random, very random. He was on somebody's platform. I just happened to be scrolling, saw him on a platform. It was not a matchmaking platform. He was just up there kind of talking about the roads of Nigeria. Um, and I just kind of tuned in. You know, I wasn't looking for anything at all. Um, I came in the, I, I didn't come in the box. I was just kind of in the comments. There were a couple of people on the platform that knew me. So they spoke and I spoke. And then the next thing you know, he was in my inbox. Very nice. Very nice. Very reserved. Very um, quiet in the beginning. Very quiet. Very nice. Right? Okay. So I was supposed to come to Nigeria for the first time last December, I had a friend that was getting married, but I ended up not going. Okay. So him and I, him and I started talking just general conversation. Not, it wasn't, Ooh, baby, baby. Wasn't none of that. Just general conversation. Um, in about two weeks I said, no, I think he my type. Like he a little too quiet for me. I'm loud. I'm boisterous. I'm outgoing. I was like, no, nah, he a little too quiet, a little too quiet. So, um, I, I remember the day that I was going to tell him, that I didn't think we were compatible, he kind of started opening up and I was like, oh, okay, he might be all right. Still wasn't really interested. Nice conversation because he seemed to be very mature, had a, had a really good conversation. Okay. Um, um, I, I, I asked him very early on, like maybe the second or third conversation, I asked him, did he believe in multiple wives? Because I know that that can be a cultural or traditional thing for men in Nigeria. He was like, no, I can't even handle one. I'm not going to get two. Like I'm divorced. She cheated on me. She got remarried um, and she moved away. And I was like, okay, you know, right. Okay. So now it's February of this year. So I'm an international model. So I was, I had a show in London. Okay. So he put in, he put in a visa to come visit me for the first time in London. And I was like, okay. oh, that's going to be really nice. Yeah. Right. I, I filled out the paperwork wrong. I did. So, so he ended up not coming because I needed to do the letter of invitation, but I, I filled it out wrong. So he ended up not coming. Okay. So I was like, okay, no big deal. Right. Okay. So it's February. Now it's, March. Now it's April. Now he told me two things in November when we first started talking. The first thing was, I do not want to come to the U S I'm very established over here in Nigeria. I do not want to come to the U S that was the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing was, I don't plan on talking to you for three or four years. Like most people do. Um, we, we need to meet like every three or three, we need to meet every three months. He was like, we're going to make that happen. Like in the middle, you come here, I come near whatever, like we need to meet so that we can keep the relationship going. So I said, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. That seemed it seemed feasible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, in my mind, when I went over there for the first time in April, I did not have marriage on my mind. I did not have courtship on my mind. I went over there because I wanted to see if his words were going to line up with his actions. Yeah. So I didn't have anything in my mind. I said, I like tall men. And I said, now, if I get off this plane and you're not tall, then we just going to have a good time. <laughs> and, those Legos, and then I'm going to come back home. I'm going to come back <laughs> home. Right. 
So he was like, yeah, because if you're not pretty like you are on that camera, we just go have a good time and then you just go back home. I said, okay. So that was the agreement that we yeah. made. Okay. So I get over there. Um, he meets me at the airport. He has a driver. He's tall. I'm pretty. Bam. We, we, we good. We like, okay, we good. Yeah. All right. So we stay in Lagos. He never left me. Never. Ne like we were together the entire time. He paid for everything. I did not pay for nothing. I paid for nothing. There was never any money exchanged. Mm. Never. Okay. He asked me to marry him. Mm, maybe. Um, maybe three days. Maybe maybe the first three or four days when I was over there, he asked me to marry him. Right. Very surprised. I was super shocked. Like. Like shocked. But by this time, I was like, you know what? Like his 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 actions seemed to be lining up when I was over there. He told me he had some coins, so I, I knew he had some. I was like, okay, like, okay, all right. Um, I leave from over there. He does the typical Nigerian thing, like he got me some clothes made before I got over there. So I had I had native attire made mm -hmm. that he got for me when I already he had it made for me, right? Um, he uh took me to the finest restaurants. I met his family. I met his family. His family. <laughs> mm -hmm, right. Okay. Interesting. Um, we we hung out. We, we you know we hung out. Um, had a really good. I had a really good time. Like I had a really good time. And I was like, man, like he might be the one. We made an agreement. The agreement was he would give me two years to get myself together because my modeling career is really popping now, right? Um, and he was like, I'm building I'm building a six-bedroom household. By the two years, it'd be perfect. We can move into the house together. We'll go to Turkey to get the furniture. So I was like, oh, that sounds like two years. I need two years. Like, fine. Because yeah, I good. moved. I, I was going to be moving there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I said, okay. All right. So I get here. Everything is cool. And then all hell broke loose, loose June 2nd. June second, okay. So he he um, told me he works for NNPC. He's a big okay. he's a big boy at yeah. NNPC. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm listening. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into all of that. He's a big boy at NN, NNPC. So I knew he had some coins, right? Yeah. He he's he's evil and he's a little arrogant. Like evils can be a little arrogant. They yeah, my, they they my, little show that's off. That's my brother right there. They show off. Yeah, they show off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. With, yeah. So, so um, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I got a prophecy. I got a prophecy in October, the month before I met him. Okay. There was a prophetess that told me she saw me in Africa. She saw me with my own fashion line, blah, blah, blah. And everything that she has said has come to pass. Everything. Mm -hmm. I will be in Nigeria next week mm -hmm. to put on a fashion show. And I got a fragrance made over there that I'm bringing back to the States. Everything the woman said came to pass. Everything. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. June 2nd. He. Well, when I was over there, he got orders to go to China. And he kept asking me if I wanted to go. And the Holy Ghost kept telling me, no, do not go. And he kept saying, well, baby, I'm going to get your ticket. Like, why you don't want to go? I said, I don't know, but I just, I don't want to go. Like something is unctioning me to not go. Yeah. So when he got over there with some things that kept happening, he, he lost his luggage. Um, his eyes swole up. Oh. Um, he missed he he missed the meeting that he was supposed to go over there for work. Like, like one thing after another kept happening. And yeah. I said, yeah, that's the reason why I wasn't supposed to go yeah. because I was supposed to be here covering you. Cause I would be distracted if I was over there. Right. Okay. So we got totally off track. I woke up one morning in June at three o'clock and I said, something is not right. I was like, something's not right. Yeah. So I called him. 
I'm like, something's going on. Like, tell me what's going on. Cause I, I wasn't quite hearing from him. And he was like, nothing. Like it's a 13 hour difference from where you are in China. I just think we need to get on a better schedule. I'm going to do better, blah, 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 blah. So now mind you now, when he asked me to marry him, I contacted the elders in my church when I was in Nigeria, when he asked me to marry. So he has talked to the elders in my church. <laughs> so when he was acting crazy, right. my elders, my elders called him and was like, like, what's going on? Like, I'm mean, there to tell her she's not hearing from y'all. Like, is everything good? Like, do we need to talk? To you? Like, you want to talk? Like, what's going on? He was like, no, 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 no. It's just the time difference. Like, we just need to get on a better schedule. I promise when I come home, everything will be on track. Okay. So I hired a pri private investigator in Lagos because something just did not, it just, right. it just didn't seem like it. If something is something is wrong, something is wrong. Right. Now, there was a time when we didn't talk for about 12 days. Yeah, about 12 days we didn't talk. He accused me of being with a Ghanaian guy that commented on a picture on TikTok. And I said, why would I be with somebody from Ghana I can't see him no quicker than I can see you in Nigeria. That don't make sense. Don't like, make sense yeah. That don't make sense, right? You, okay. You can so, tell he's maybe he's looking for something. Right. So we're we're so we're trying to get back on track, but we could never get on track. So I go to New York. I, I end up getting a um businesswoman of the year award with the fashion industry in New York. I go to New York. Holy Ghost tells me to investigate his company. I pull his company up. I see a woman as an owner when he told me him and his three brothers owned his company. Okay. I go to Instagram. I screenshot it. I say, who is this woman? He said, oh, that's my sister. I say, I thought your sister was married. He say she is. So then why does she have your last name? He was like, oh, no, in Nigeria, you know, you could switch the names. Her her last name could be her middle name. I said, okay. Now, in the back of my mind, I know that don't make no sense. Okay. The investigator sends me the investigation report. It said he does work for NNPC, okay. but he has a wife and she's pregnant. So I say... Okay, I just I'm not, I still don't say nothing to him. I say, okay, I get home September 17th. It was very strange because he let me get on the plane from New York to come back to where I live. I live in South Carolina and I didn't talk to him. And I thought that, that was really kind of strange. Like, cause he, he, he know I'm getting on this plane. I done called him and he not answering like what's going on. So I go on Instagram now. In June, he caught me, I mean, crocodile tears. His wife, his, his sister yeah. told him, his sister told him that she heard his ex-wife got married, moved to the UK and took the kids to the UK. And now he doesn't know where they are. So I say, well, why would she do that? Like, what was she mad about? I don't know why she mad. I said, no, you know why she mad? Because only a mad woman would do that. Like, what? Like, what? I don't know. She cheated on me, and we divorced, and so I don't know why she's mad. Okay, so let's 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 fast forward to yeah. September two year, two months ago. September, I go on Instagram. I find the wife. He's following the wife on Instagram. I find a woman that follows both of them i call the woman now mind you steven and i have been talking to wedding planners we have booked a venue in no oweary no we have word. booked a venue in oweary yeah the ashler event center right because we were supposed to get married in december next month right okay so i reach i asked the lady i say Hey, um, you were recommended from a friend. I'm getting ready to get married in December. And my friend recommended that you cater our wedding. So she said, who's your friend? I said, her name is Prisca Azariki. She was like, oh, yeah, that's my friend. Like, I know Prisca. She said, you're getting married to her who? I said, I'm getting married to her brother. She said, what's her brother's name? I said, Steven. And she got quiet. Quiet. 
I wow. said, you know Stephen? She said, yeah, I know Stephen. And, and, and I go to church with his sister. I said, well, is Stephen Prisca's husband or Steve Prisca's brother? And she hung up the phone. Click. Guess who called while I was texting her back? Steven. I said, oh, mm -hmm. she know know him. Yeah. Right? She know him. Okay. But I didn't answer. That was September 17th. I have not talked to him since. Well, except for the times that he calls me from different Nigerian numbers thinking I don't know it's him, but it's him. Okay. Right? Okay. The next day, the wife calls me. The wife calls me the next wow, day. You, you, you never called? No. The wife calls me. Listen, it's a whole twist to this. The wife calls me the next day. His wife lives here in the U.S. No way. But it's not the wife that's pregnant over there. I told you. I told you. <laughs> I told you. Listen, because it gets better. Listen, it gets better. The wife calls me. The wife that's here in the U.S., she calls me. She accuses me of like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> she accuses me of sleeping with him she accuses me of seducing him she accuses me how miserable i must be to break up a happy home i let her talk i just let her talk and then i said to her your husband is cheating on us ma'am because i'm getting ready to marry your husband well, this is all snow this it, is it, it's your snow. husband <laughs> your husband asked me to marry him in May. Your I have your husband's passport. I have your husband's banking information. I have your husband's flight itinerary when he went to China. I have the booking.com um Airbnb receipt. I have all of the re restaurants. I said your husband took me to the finest restaurant. Your husband is cheating on us, ma'am, because he is our husband, right? Okay. I said, whatever information you need, I have it. Whatever receipt you need, I have it. She never, ever asked me for the receipt. Never. That told me as a woman, she is used to him doing that because she never yeah. asked, right? Yeah. Okay. I said to her, tell your husband he better not call me no more. And when you're ready to talk to me like a grown woman, you can call me back and I'll talk to you. Yeah. Okay. Two or three weeks later, I get this strange phone call at six o'clock in the morning from a Nigerian number. With the white man's picture. I answered the phone. He says nothing. A few days later, I text that number. And I say, who is this? He says, oh, this is John from California. I was scrolling in WhatsApp and I saw your beautiful picture. I say, well, John from California, why do you have a Nigerian number? Mm -hmm. I thought this might have been Stephen calling. And he never said nothing. Now, you know as well as I know, if that was yeah. a real John, he would have yeah. been like, I just told you it was John. Like, who was Stephen, right? Okay. The wife calls me after John calls me and says, I told you to stop calling my husband. I said, I'm not calling your husband. Your husband's calling me. So whatever device you have on your husband's phone, you should have saw that your husband called me first. And I text your husband back because he called me. Okay. She told me I better not come to Nigeria. If I come to Nigeria, I wasn't going to make it out. Hmm. So I found out that she's over here undocumented. So I put a case on her because she threatened me. I, I put a case on Stephen for threatening me because he told me anytime I come to Nigeria, he would always know. This is where it gets good. This is where it gets good. Stephen and his lawyer just went to the police station last week. <laughs> and he he told the truth. He said, "Yes, I know her. I asked her to marry me. She came over here in in May. I engaged her. Um, and then the police officer said to him, "Well, why did y'all break up?" He said, "I just I didn't understand her anymore, so we just broke up." So the police officer said, "Well, we know that your wife has threatened her. Call your wife." So he calls the wife on video. The wife lies and says, I didn't call her, I didn't call her. But the but the police officer already has the screenshots of us talking, of her calling yeah, me. Yeah. Right? So Stephen tells his wife, um, this is a serious matter now. Stop calling her. Like, I am in the police station, and if you or I ever get in touch with her again, 
I am going to jail. And so there's an undertaking. What's that called? Like, what's the undertaking legal thing? Uh, it's like a petition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Petition. Yeah. He, he had to sign it. Yeah. And the AIG and the AIG approved it. As of yesterday, when the AIG called me, they now believe that they were trying to scam me. She's here undocumented. He wanted to marry me to get the citizenship to get over here. He would then leave me and then be with her and make her a citizen. Wow. Wow. I told you this. I told you this was going to be a story. Wow. That's un I told you. What is this? Some people are, yeah. some people are way too, too evil. Like people, some people think so, like, this is crazy. Where are they getting all this demonic when I sent, knowledge when from? I, listen, when I sent the engagement video to the wife, she said, oh, I know, I already knew about you. Really? They were in on it together. They were in on it together. That's why, that's why he told me that was her sister. So I don't know what went wrong for her to call me. I, I don't know. I don't know. But of course she got my number because her friend, the caterer, gave it to her. Yeah, because uh, when that the girl from Instagram made that quick call or quick chat, so she has to pretend, you know, like she's, yep. you know, she don't know, like, all this is a shocking because if she didn't do that, it will still come back. So she have to act like it. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason yeah. why she even have to get involved is because she now it has busted. Yes. So maybe, you know, nothing will come out from this anymore. She find out all this. So I think we just have to blow this up and see if we can look for somebody else. Yep. Exactly. But this is all God really helped you. I kept saying, I kept saying, it's not about the money. Like it's no, because he is filthy it's not rich. The money, yeah. It's not about the money. Mm -hmm. Like what is it about? He, and I kept saying, he kept saying he didn't want to come over here. So it's not about the documents until the police said it is about the documents. Wow. That is what it's about. Is it? He has the money, but he don't have the documents. And he 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 has he brainwashed you earlier, telling you he don't want to come to America to leave. So he has Absolutely. to use that to brush it off your mind. Like, and I, let me I, tell I, you, <laughs> let me tell you, the word says that the Holy Ghost will bring all things back to your remembrance. This morning, I woke up and I kept remembering that every time I would. Like towards the end, every time I would say something, he would say, well, baby, it sounds like you want me to come over there. And I was like, I would say, no, because you already told me you didn't want to come. I'm looking forward to moving over there. I'm not saying for you to come over here. Or I would be in the store and I would say, man, I got to carry these bags in the house. Well, baby, it sounds like you want me to come over there to help you with the bags. And I would say, no, you already told me you wasn't coming over here. So I'm not asking you to come over. It Now, it would, now I'm thinking, see, if, if we would have gotten married and you would have come over here, the excuse would have been, you wanted me over here. Yeah, I don't want to come me, here. You asked you... me to come. Right. I didn't want to come. You asked me to come over here. That's what it was. Yeah, he just, uh, he just uh, a, a super manipulator. And he just want to use, he, he just playing out there. And the, how, 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 how do these people really breathe? Like, how do they sleep in the night? Like knowing that you toiling with somebody's emotion, like this is this can break somebody, this can cause somebody to commit suicide, this can cause a lot. Now let me tell you, let me tell you what God revealed to me. When I came back home, I never put that ring on. It was something about that ring. Thank God. I, it got to it, it got to the point where he would call me. Like at times he wouldn't never call just to see if I had the ring on. And then he would say, why you don't have a ring? Like, like I feel some kind of way. Cause, and I would say, I guess, cause I'm not used to wearing a ring. It wasn't until recently when God said to me, you have been rejecting that ring since you got back for a reason. For a reason. I never put the ring on. I just could not put the ring on. It's just something that kept nagging at me like something is not right something is not right so you know on tiktok 
Everybody is oh. talking about the scammers and talking about the money and the this and the that. But nobody wants to celebrate the one that got away. Yes. The one that nobody, we ain't talking about the one that got away. The one that didn't send no money. I didn't spend not a penny. I so that. Di- not a I penny that. did I spend. I love that. Nothing. That. Man, I, Anna, if you if you listen to some of my videos, I was talking about, I, I said something about Juju. People don't know. Like that ring would mm-hmm. have trapped you down until right. you finish the whole thing. Right. Yeah. I could a, a not lot, put that uh, ring on for nothing in the world. I don't know what it was about that ring, but I could not put that ring on. And I, I just and, I, and even when I would say I'm gonna put my ring on today, I would walk out the house and totally forget about the ring. That's one thing about you know, like I, I'm glad that you save and sanctify. A lot of people will just go into this dating app and all that, but they are not filled with Holy Spirit and they mm-hmm. fall victim. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. you're just empty. Anything can come in you think is all love, but it's not all love. The enemy will nope. use that just to to trap you and gain what they want to gain from you. And yeah. they will, at the end, they might release you, they might not. Mm-hmm. You know, because when somebody can, if somebody can do something like this, they can go extra mile to hurt that person. They don't care about how you cry, how you feel. No. They don't care about all that. No. You know, no. doing this with my team, has really made me to realize that some people are so evil. Mm-hmm. You know, you see them walking around in Nigeria with a evil, devilish mind. Somebody mm-hmm. will be in America crying, mm-hmm. in Europe mm-hmm. crying. They care less. And let me tell you, when I tell you I am, I have been so peaceful. I've been so peaceful till it's so eerie how peaceful I've been. Like I, I have the peace that surpasses all understanding because I should be out of my mind. Yeah. I should be out. Can you ima- like I'm? I'm getting that's ready to get married much. next that's month. Too I was supposed much. to. That's too much. That's it's too, too much. much. Like I, like mm-hmm. this is only God did this for you because <laughs> this is too much. I don't even know how you were really standing for this. Like right now, still sharing this test. This is crazy. A husband and wife duo. Yep. He on TikTok. He on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So you permitting me to post this anywhere, everywhere? Yes. You can post it. I don't care. (laughs) I, 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 um, yeah, you can post it. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Wow. I I love this because, uh, some people discredit what I'm doing on, on TikTok. I laugh about it because that's how the devil is. You know, he makes you to feel like uh, you're not doing, you're just wasting your time or you're not helping people. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many people that I've helped with my platform. I know even my teams are in different places in in Nigeria right now, going searching. Mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. for people. I feel mm-hmm. for people. Even there was a, a lady that I spoke with earlier today. I told her, hey, I don't need to send my team for this. Please mm-hmm. break this off now. Right. Um, when he was in the police station, of course he lied and said he didn't, you know, I took it wrong when he he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't threatening me. He said I took it wrong. <laughs> but um one thing he said, he said, I never thought that you would take it this far. I didn't even know you had connections in Lagos. Oh. I said, it's a whole lot of things that you don't know about me. A whole lot. Mm-hmm. I said, and obviously, I didn't know you had a wife either, and and a second one over there. I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about them. So I think we even. So he just like, so he might have like four, three of them. Concubine. I know he has one over here. He has one over here. She's been seven years and she's not documented. And he has one over there and she's getting ready to have a baby. And, that's what and I-, I think. I, I I would almost bet that she's going to have that baby this month because September would have been the third round of us meeting every three months. And um, he kept saying, babe, I'm ready to buy you a ticket. Like, you coming over here in September? And I was like, no. 
because I'm coming in November. So I don't 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 waste the money to get me no ticket in September. And then I got to turn back around and come in November. And he said, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to really spend time with you in November because, you know, Nigeria kind of shuts down for festive season in November. I mean, in, in December. And I don't really know what's going to be going on in November. And I said, that don't make no sense. <laughs> like, I know yeah. it shuts down, but. I know goodness well you're not going to pay for me to come over there and you not see me. He was like, well, I'm just saying I don't really know, but I will make time for you because I'm going offshore in September, but I can make time to see you in September. I said, no, it's okay. Yeah, that, I said, yeah. yeah. The, 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 he having a baby in November. Yeah, he wasn't going to be here. Baby's coming. Baby's coming. He planned his, he, his life very well. But if you want to plan your life very well like that, why would you want to put, use people's emotions? And I, I, believe it or not, you might not be the only one who's doing this. That's what somebody said. That's what somebody said. Like, But, you know, in the beginning, people kept telling me, oh, he coming back, he coming back because a Nigerian man doesn't like to lose. And I said, no, he ain't coming back. Like... He like yeah, I exposed him. I exposed him. I, I exposed everything. So what would you come? There's nothing you could say when you come back. Yeah, at this point, at this point, you went too deep into digging uh, everything out. You know, God used right. you to just dig. God just uh, want to help you. In, you know, in this area, so you you right. was able to dig too deep. Like he will be afraid of you. He will be like, no, I don't know. I, I don't even know that this woman have this connection or this woman can mm -hmm. no. He will definitely run away from you. Every anything Absolutely. that will connect him with you, he will be done with it. That's right. Absolutely. I, That's I wish, right. Uh, so I kept yeah. I kept saying, no, he's not coming back. I was like, I'm telling you, there's nothing that he can say to me. He knows better. Like he would not. Yeah, so when he confirmed me that he didn't think I would go this far, yeah. I said, mm, I know you didn't. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm so I'm happy for 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 you that uh, excuse me, that God was able to bring you out of this. A lot of people have 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 not even tried to come out from the the bondage that a lot of some of these guys put them in. A lot mm -hmm. of Americans are in bondage in America. Mm -hmm. Don't even know it. You know, their family mm -hmm. members will be trying to be like, what is wrong with you? What? Are, what because they don't know what they're you know, going through. They'll be like stuck with the guy. Oh, I'm in love with him. Oh, I'm in love with him. Don't even know. Like the time is already, Juju is walking. You know, Juju, if, man, God, if you would have put that ring on, that Juju will start walking right away. And he, he, I never he, could wear the ring. I did. I never could put. Even when I would get up in the morning and purposely say, "I am going to wear my ring today," I would always forget it. I would always be wherever I'm, and I'd be like, "Oh man, I didn't wear the ring." I never had an unction to put that ring on. Never. Okay. So, what is the advice that you you gonna give some people that are you know still hoping and believing? Or you know, it, it's good to find love, but what, what do you have to tell others out there? I would tell the ladies, listen when your mind is telling you something is not right. When your mind is telling you something is not right, it is because it is not right. Yeah. <laughs> right now, now maybe, you know, I kind of, I might've went to the extreme. I hired a private investigator over there. So I may have gone to the extreme. But when your mind is telling you something is not right, back away. Yeah. If it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. It's a duck. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, don't don't be so easily swayed, um, and the, don't be so easily open because you want to give them an opportunity. If you wouldn't give an American guy the opportunity, don't give the Nigerian guy the opportunity because they will take advantage I of that. Think, yeah. Well, yeah, they will take, they will advantage, take advantage of it. So, so my advice is listen to your head look at the red flags for what they are and back away and back away and I, 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 you know one thing i i do tell people stop ignoring the red flags stop when ignoring it, them when it comes up don't don't just catch it 
and break it off. There's they don't no want to. They because, can't. Yeah. They can't because by now they're invested, and they haven't really had the critical conversations that they should have in, in the in the oh, early yeah. stages. Yeah. I had the critical conversations, and he still was a shyster, right? I talked about the wives. Um, we talked about money. We talked about a green card. We talked about coming over here, and his his answer was the same. I'm well established over here. I do not want to come to the U.S. I do not plan on talking to you on the phone for three or four years. We need to meet somewhere like at least for the first year, every three or four months. Things that you should be doing to work towards a relationship. He already had that down pat. He had a down pack. So that made me think like, oh, okay, he might be all right. So for seven months, he was the perfect guy. I'm going to tell you what I told his wife. I said, if our husband... Hadn't it changed his routine, I wouldn't have never found out about you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But when he stopped being consistent with me, that's when I knew something was going on. Yeah. That's when I knew something or somebody was distracting him. Because you went from us talking three times a day till now I'm getting a voice note at night. And I was like, yeah, something, something's going on. Like, something's going on. I, I love this because at this part that you just said, you know, when when they go silent for one day, two days, three days, yeah, you have to ask questions. Yeah, that's something right. Something is going on. Something is going on. Now, it is also believed that he never went to China in June, even no. though I saw the airline, even though I saw the airline ticket, even though I saw the Chinese Uber driver. Even though I saw him in a Chinese shop, I am being told that there are lots of Chinese shops in Nigeria that I don't know about. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so I am being told that he never That's even flew true, to Nigeria, even though I saw the flight itinerary. I saw the flight itinerary, <laughs> but yeah, I am there, being there, told there, that he nothing, never went to China. There's nothing people like people that are into this and uh, now he's a rich guy you know there's nothing they cannot do they, they can go any length to get the documents or papers or whatsoever fake that they can go out and they can i forgot to, to tell you i forgot to tell you that the police officer the aig at the aig office told me he doesn't he don't even work for anpc he don't work there <laughs> hold up I thought he said that he won't he, he don't work there. He does not. So that means he just do he's just a, a full-time scammer. That means he, he got a fake badge and showed me an NPC fake badge. Wow. <laughs> That's deep. That's and he lives, much. he does not live in Lagos, he lives in Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt. We this were supposed is... to get married in December at the at the Ashley Event Center in O'Weary because he's getting coronated. So we were going to do the coronation reception and the wedding together. I know what I'm talking about, baby. This is I'm, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking. Okay. This guy, this guy have <laughs> script script somewhere. Following that script, like. Like this is too much, and the listen, wives. We listen when I t we have been on video talking to the event planner for the wedding, and all this is all this might be just play because you don't know. Hmm. Man. So I really want to I really want to find out about the coronation, but I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't, I don't even know. If you have the address and everything, I can. I don't have the team. address. I only. I only know that it's being. I only know that it's going to be in a weary. That's all I know. I don't know the date because, um, the people that were supposed to give us the date never got back to him in time when we were talking, and so, so I, I never got the date. I never got the um. The address, I just know it was going to be in a weary. That's all I know. Yeah. Uh, we can talk about that off camera. Uh, if, if you want me to trace that, 
with my team, I, we can trust that. But if you don't feel like, no, I, it's I, mean, not that I, I don't think it's, it's serious, serious anymore. Yeah, it's not that serious. Yeah, it's not yeah. that serious. If I, I'm already going over there in November, but of course, I wanted to go over there in December to go to the coronation to be like. I, I mean, thought I was supposed to be getting coronated, uh, but I'm going. Yeah, I'm going yeah, next week, so it, it's good. Just to put everything in trash. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. God saved you from. Is it? You know, it's not even to scam you, but God saved you from juju. The worst thing that can happen that can happen to any human being in this world is when they put juju on you. Like, and you think it was on the ring? You think it was on the ring? I'm. I'm not thinking. I'm just telling you. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the right. only way you can prepare all these documents. Go and mm -hmm. sign all those things. If you are not a, if you are not on that spell, you can't do it. You you mm -hmm. might give up at any time. So they have mm -hmm. to set you up, right? Keep you down very well. That mm -hmm. you just be doing whatever they ask you to do. You have no say of your own no more. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, I'm covered by the blood. Let me be clear about that. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment Amen. shall be condemned. I'm covered Amen. by the blood. I, I, I know the Bible the says, surely they shall gather. But if their gathering is not of God, they will <laughs> that's it. And that's exactly that's what it. really happened over mm -hmm. you. I, mm -hmm. I thank God for yeah. your life. I thank God for this testimony. And I believe that, a, that, that there will be a lot of people that will learn from this. You know, yeah. when they see yeah. something, hear something, mm -hmm. or feel something, they just have to stand up for themselves. Right. I think for me, my prayer is I don't want to get bitter. Like I don't, yes. I don't want to be, I don't want to be bitter about it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I want to get the lesson because it was some, it's some things I learned now. It's some right. things that I learned being right. with Stephen, you tuned in as a Ricky. It's some things I learned. Like I learned. As a woman, I don't have to think every, I don't have to say everything I think. Yeah. I learned that, right? Um, as because there was a time when I had a whole list of what I wanted my husband to look like financially, spiritually, mentally. Um, and once I tore the list up, my prayer is give me a wife's heart. See, I want a wife's heart, wow. right? Because I want my husband to recognize God when he sees me. Yeah. Right. I want to be able to influence my husband when I see him taking us down the wrong road. I want to be able to influence him to go the right way. I want to help him reach destiny. I want to be his destiny helper. And I never would have, I never would have known to pray, pray those prayers if I had not had Stephen in my life. Wow. Because that was my prayer for him. My, my, my prayer was, you know, I wanted him to be healthy. I wanted him to be wealthy. I wanted him to be rich in wisdom. I wanted, I wanted him to find me always in worship. So, so I learned a lot of things on how to be a wife from this. Wow. That's, a, that's awesome. You know, in, in some difficulties like this, God will use it to Ooh. teach us something. Yes, he will. Yes, yes he will. That's awesome. You wow. gotta get the lesson. You gotta get yeah. the lesson. You gotta get the lesson. I'm so I'm so glad to have you on, and uh, I, I believe that a lot of people will be encouraged, and uh, I I believe that that uh, you are strong because I can tell you are strong, and God will keep on strengthening you, you know, and uh, whatsoever that is your heart desire, I pray that God will fulfill it. I pray that God will guarantee everything. I receive it. I receive it. Just uh, I receive it. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. I will. Yeah.